Aloha, it's Dave Lawrence. How are you? Hope you're doing good. Big mahalo for tuning in. Today on the line, I'm pleased to welcome a legendary lead vocalist, guitarist, keyboardist, songwriter, musician whose work has brought him to the very top of the Billboard Top 100 Singles chart. It's put him on millions of albums his fans have bought. They've done some important shows along the way, from Live Aid to sold-out gigs around the world to packed houses. They have an immense island history and connections here. They're playing three dates coming up in the islands this Friday, November 25th, Blaisdell Concert Hall, Saturday, November 26th, the Hilton Waikoloa Village on the Big Island, and Sunday, November 27th at the Mac in Kahului, Maui. It is an honor to welcome Ario Speedwagon's Kevin Cronin. Hey, okay. Kevin. Aloha. Hi, Dave. How are you, brother? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. Thanks for taking the time to do this. We're really stoked okay. to, to have you coming back to town. Um, really do appreciate you talking ahead, ahead of this thing. Besides your September 15th, 1979 show at UH's Andrews Amphitheater, can you think of an earlier Hawaii experience that you guys have? Oh, man. Well, I, I remember the first time we all, in fact, the first time I was ever in Hawaii, we came as a band, and it was, I, I'm, I'm going to say it was, um, about 1978, and I, cause I remember we stayed at the uh, Royal Lahaina in uh, in Maui, and that was our first experience in in Hawaii. And I remember we got in after dark, and we couldn't find anything. We got lost. Our travel agent messed up the reservation. We got to the hotel. They weren't ready for us. It was just like one of those uh, Spinal Tap experiences <laughs> at, the, at the front desk. <laughs> but uh, we ended up falling in love with it. I mean, I, I've been, uh, you know, we went to. And met Bob Longy and had dinner at Longy's, and uh, I was uh, I was in love with Lahaina from the from the very beginning. So, and I've I've had a a long history of of you know I fell in love with Kauai when I went there. We used to stay at the Waiohai before it got uh, uh, blown away, and we've just got a you know a lot of good. Uh, Ario Speedwagon rock and roll memories, and also Cronin family mem- memories that that are uh, that are all around uh, the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, we appreciate that you've made it both a personal and uh, pr- professional journey with us here. You, going back to that, those first memories in Lahaina, Kevin. You were gigging. So it was seventy eight. Were you guys gigging on Maui, or was that just a, a vacation point after playing here? I think it must have been that we went there f- first for for a little break. Because okay. there, there really wasn't a gig on Maui. In fact, we've never played on Maui before. This uh, next weekend is going to be our first uh, our first show uh, anywhere in the islands other than Honolulu. So we're gonna we're gonna visit um, Maui and the Big Island professionally for the very first time. So that that should be fun. But uh, yeah, I think we must have been playing in in uh, in Honolulu and just kind of came over to uh, to Maui just for a little uh, stopover. I, you know, it's it's been a long time. Sure. I really you know. I, no. I got a pretty good memory of it, but I but uh, that one you got me stumped. On. <laughs> you have a great memory. Sometimes people have a real hard time with these details, and you're doing you're just kicking ass. So don't even sweat okay. that. And and another gig that was important in your Hawaii lineage, which I'm sure many fans here in Honolulu um, will appreciate and and remember, and that was when you played Aloha Stadium, and it was September 22nd, 1985. It was called Rock Mania, and I was wondering if you had any memories. Aerosmith and Cheap Trick were also on that bill. Right. I mean, it's like I, I, I was thinking about that because the, the, the strange thing about it was is, is that we headlined the show. Cheap Trick was a special guest, and Aerosmith was the opener. Wow. So that, uh, yeah. So that was a that was a very interesting thing. That was, if I remember correctly, that's when Stephen and Jill were split up. And I think that Stephen was in the band, and Joe Perry wasn't. They had a different guitar player, and it was it definitely. Um, it wasn't one of the high points in Aerosmith's career for sure, but for us, it was a it was an amazing gig, and uh, yeah, I remember that well. I, I, yeah, and, and that makes sense that it would have been in autumn because I remember that Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick wore a skeleton outfit, like a Halloween costume, oh, right. on stage. <laughs> <laughs> so that, yeah, that that's Rick for you. What a great memory, dude! You're outstanding with this stuff. I have this. Uh, I'm pleased to to have. I'm honored to have these loyal listeners who. Um, 
who send me Rick the Mystery Faxer, loyal listener Steve. They send me all these historic things about Hawaii and all the rock rock bands and stuff that you guys did here way before I arrived ten years ago. And one of the things oh, that's awesome. it is awesome, and that's why I give them credit during interviews because they are outstanding uh, members of the community for doing that. One of the things that loyal listener Steve pointed out to me is he want, and this could be wrong, but could be right. It sounds like it could be right all from right. things you said. He said he once read that you wrote "Can't Fight This Feeling" while vacationing on Molokai. Ah, uh, you know what? That's close. Very close. I actually, uh, <laughs> I actually did come to Molokai uh, before we made the Wheels Are Turning record. So it was probably about 1984, and uh, you know we were we were coming off the, of the, the big High Infidelity record, and then uh, the Good Trouble record, which was a little bit of a disappointment for us. And we we felt like we really needed a. I, personally, I felt like I needed to to kind of relight my my fire or something and and uh so i i thought i needed to go somewhere where i could really just be by myself and just really concentrate on writing and really get you know into my own uh psyche as deeply as i could and did because i knew that, that that it was a really important album that we were about to make mm. and uh so i went to molokai they uh the, the uh, people at the hotel put a piano in my room for me which was really great it was right right down the beach there and uh i spent about a month uh on molokai and it was just an amazing experience uh, you know i got to visit the the uh the, the state park where the, the old leper colony was and, Papa. Uh, yep and 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 hiked in the up to the waterfalls and you know eat fresh lilikoi off the trees and and <laughs> i just had an amazing time there and it's one few times in my life that I've ever really kind of gone on a retreat just off myself and, and really stayed there. And I read a lot, walked on the beach a lot. And I ended up writing a song called Live Every Woman, uh, which was on the same record uh, as Can't Fight This Feeling. But uh, Can't Fight This Feeling was a, was a different story. That's great, though. So there's the connection. And the name of that one is, the one that was written here was which one? It's called Live Every Moment. Right, Live Every Moment. And it, it, it's on the same um, the, the same album as Can't Fight This Feeling. The album was called Wheels Are Turning. Got it. That's how Steve got the story, no doubt. The, uh, yeah. The last local appearance these guys tell me you did, and it could be wrong, but they're estimating it was in December of 88 at the Blaisdell Arena. Has it been that long? It was actually in uh, January of 1989. Okay. And, uh, and I remember... Well, you know what? It might have been, what are they saying, December? Of, yeah, I mean, it was right around that time, or right around the holidays. So it could have been December of 88, but because it, it was right, in fact, they're probably right. Yeah, <laughs> December 19th, know, know they more said. more than I did. <laughs> yeah, because that, that was the last show that, uh, that the Rich Rap did with the band. And, uh, and I remember it well because we recorded it, and, uh, and our producer and I stuck around uh, and uh, and you know mixed the uh, the sound at a, at a local studio in uh, in Honolulu and uh, uh, so you know we didn't realize we didn't know that was going to be the last show that Gary did with us but as it turns out it was and uh, and I I would love to find that tape now that you mention it that'd be an interesting tape to listen to I, I'm sure it's around the archive somewhere but uh, yeah. And, you know, I, I, I had it wrong. I was thinking that that was the show with Aerosmith and Cheap Trick, but I think you guys are right. I think Aerosmith and Cheap Trick was 85, and then the, the last sh last time we played there was with late 88, early 89. So that makes sense. Well, I love to give home... some good loyal listeners there, my friend. <laughs> I was going to say, a little bit of credit to, to the listener posse for helping out the band. Look at them. Coming Absolutely. to your aid. They, that's awesome. So of all your experiences, and it sounds like you have many here, is there just one enduring spirit of the islands may be an example of why it is that you keep coming back here on your own or something that you've done here that really uh, is a family moment that, that you treasure? Oh, man. I mean, I've, I've, I've had so many amazing experiences there. I mean, I learned how to snorkel there. I taught my children how to snorkel there. I think I taught my wife how to snorkel there. Um, so we, you know, that's something we all share. Um, you know, hiking in the Waimea Canyon in, in Kauai was just I, I'll never forget the first time. I didn't know what to expect when, the first time I went there. And I'll never forget the first over, scenic overlook. We just kind of pulled off to the, to, to the side of the road going up there, and I saw that, that thing for the first time, and just, it just blew my mind. It's so beautiful. But I, have, I really have nothing but, uh, but good memories of, uh, of, of the islands, and, and it's true. That is why I keep coming back. It's just it's relaxing. It's, it, 
it's you know spiritually refreshing it's and the fact that it's it's part of america is nice too when you go there you just feel like uh you know you're in an exotic place but you're still you're you're still in the united states and and there's a good feeling that 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 comes with that uh the, the people of hawaii have always uh welcomed my family and myself and uh I've, you know, made some really nice friends there, and, and uh, you know, I just, uh, I'm drawn to it. You know, when the opportunity to come and, and play there over the Thanksgiving holidays uh, came up, I was just like, yeah, let's go. You know, I, you know, in fact, I'll be writing a note to to my kids' school today. You know, my wife to, is getting, you know, gathering all the homework up, and, uh, <laughs> you know, because so for some reason, my, my daughter is like, she 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 loves school, and so she's like, "Oh, Dad, do I have to go?" <laughs> she's like, "I'm gonna miss three days of school." And I'm like, "Holly, trust me, you're gonna you're gonna forget all about school when you when you get to uh, when you get to the island." So, but uh, so you know, it's you know that's really the that's the biggest challenge for for me right now is just to just keep in a balance between my family and uh, and the band, and and it's something that I. Uh, spend an awful lot of energy uh, working on, and I'm working on it as we speak. So it's, uh, uh, you know, it's, but it's, it's all worth it. You know, those are the two most important things to me, my, my family, and it, number one, and my music, number two. And uh, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, just getting the support that, that from my family and, uh, and the, the understanding from the band. And, uh, but we'll all be there together this weekend, so that's going to be really, to spend Thanksgiving in the, uh, in Hawaii, that's going to be really special. We're actually having a dinner for the for everyone in the band and, and all their families, all the crew members and all their families. So we're having a big, probably fifty or sixty people together to, for the, for the Ario Speedwagon family Thanksgiving dinner, which is going to wow. be really, uh, really a nice thing on Thursday night. On Thursday night, exactly. You, w- will you be in Honolulu? Yes, we'll be in Honolulu. Uh, we're, we're all coming in on Wednesday, so we can spend the Thanksgiving together, and then we play Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, I see that the, the lineup is fantastic. Folks will get to see you here on Friday night, Saturday uh, at the Hilton Waikoloa Village on the Big Island, Sunday at the Mac in Kahului, and we're statewide. I would love to, if it's at all possible with you, Kevin, um, because we are the statewide voice of NPR in the islands, um, during your Friday show, if there's any way, I don't know how, how you know, I understand if you don't do short interviews on the day of, but I would love to be able to just come back there and do like a 10-minute thing with you in person while you're in Honolulu. Is that possible? Possible. Absolutely. Okay. That's that's, that's uh, way doable. Cause we'll, we'll be doing a sound check for sure because we have to you know, get used to the, uh, the equipment that we'll be playing on there and everything. So my suggestion would be to talk to uh, Jesse or, or whoever you're dealing yep, with. Jessica, the, uh, I will. They're dealing with Jesse. You're going to talk to her and she'll set you up. Make sure you've got uh, the proper passes, and uh, we'll uh, we'll do that. That'd be great. All right. I appreciate it. It would it would mean a lot to us and. Kev, I appreciate it, bro. I hope this wasn't a pain in the ass. We, we did it in under 15. Look at us. We're timely. Very cool. I appreciate it. Hey, Dave, believe me, I appreciate it. I, you know, I, I need everyone's understanding because I do, you know, when I'm home, it, it is all about, you know, my wife, my, my kids. As a matter of fact, my, my twin boys, Josh and Shane, they're sixth graders here at uh, Kalina Middle School, and they just, they just came in first and second in, in a cross-country race of the whole, entire sixth grade. It came down to those two at the, at the finish line. So I'm just, I'm actually kind of like... Uh, You're giddy. I'm, You're giddy. Yeah, it kind of took my breath away. I, I didn't expect to, I didn't expect that. And, you know, to see you know, out of, you know, over 350 kids for, you know, for our our two boys to come in first and second, I'm like, they didn't get it from me. And then, and then of course, my wife tells me, yeah, she, she used to win her track meets when she was in school, too. So for her, it's a little more understandable. But for me, I'm, like, blown away. I'd be, like, lucky if I came in the top 100 when I was a kid. So I'm uh, I'm definitely uh, living uh, vicariously, athletically through my boys, which is, uh, which is quite... Uh, quite fulfilling i'm really proud of those guys and uh so you'll meet them you'll, you'll, you'll meet the two uh two fastest kids in, in sixth grade and dude i look middle school wouldn't it? i look forward to it it'll be an honor and, uh, I'll, and i'll pull back a beer tonight in their honor i promise there you go there you go i'd like to do that myself that sounds like a plan i'll see you friday kevin you travel safe i'm giving you a hug and a high five brother thank you dave i'll see you then bye-bye brother aloha